and welcome to the NBS Show, episode 212. Wow, 212. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is... Lurker Cat! Yay, we got Lurker Cat on. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you, Norman? Um, I'm doing good. I'm doing well. Um, a bit... Uh, I don't know. I, I, I won't say I'm a bit tired, but I'm recovering well. Because if people heard that last week I got sick again and then I'm recovering slowly. Hey, it's, it, well, it's one of those confusing things. But I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Awesome, I'm glad to hear you get there. So how about you? How are you doing? I'm doing good, just chilling up here in the land of Scottyland. Oh, Scottyland. <laughs> yeah, Scottyland. This is how it shall be known now. <laughs> oh, okay. So, Where we all say yo, 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 I. <laughs> really? We will soon. <laughs> I will make it so. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, Lurk or Cat? Uh, or, I'm just gonna call you Lurk or Cat. Um, which one sounds good? Either, either, either or. I'm just confused right I now. I think they both sound pretty good. I will take <laughs> them both. Alright, then. So anyway, Cat, um, it's been a while since you're on, so what have you been doing since this, the last time you were on? Uh, what have I been doing? Mostly drawing pictures for the Midnight Scribes Creative Vibes season one and season two. Mm. Other than that, just doing crazy stuff. Ah, alrighty then, alrighty then. So, Sick. it's been a while since you're on, and you remember the last episode you were on? Uh, I can't remember the number, but it was almost a year ago now. Really? No, wow. That... It's about two months shy, or three months shy of a year. Uh. Two months, I think. Cause it was the end of June we recorded, I think. I... Because I had my pirate night that night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I think I seem to remember trying to do a pirate joke or accent or something like that, but it didn't turn out well because I am not a good pirate. <laughs> it's like it turns out neither am I. I'm a very very bad pirate. Although we did make friends that night by beating them up in the street. You wouldn't think that that would be a thing, but it's a thing and it works. Wow! And I got it on record. It was on. Uh, episode 172, uh, 10 months ago. Cool. 172. So about 50 episodes ago. Wow, that, that is a lot. And 10 months ago, yeah. Shy, of, yeah. Oh, shy two months to be about a year. It's been a while. You should be on more. Yeah, I think I should. I've got more time now, so I should, probably could be on a bit more. Yay, that's awesome. And I hear the audience going, no! I don't hear them. <laughs> They're not saying anything. <laughs> It's like I hear objections in before comments, <laughs> but now you're, you're here. You're here. You're going to stay for a bit, and we're going to talk about the news. But before we do that, I need to ask you. Well, I would say four important questions, but just the two. See if things change. Favorite character? It's still Fluttershy, I'm afraid. Yes, we got another Fluttershy Can't club. Can't say no to Flutters. She's David Attenborough pony. She is the best pony. Yay. She, well, today is Fluttershy Day, if I remember right. I know! It's awesome! I know! Two Fluttershy fans, Fluttershy Day, stuff about Fluttershy. Uh, yay. It's like internal battle, but she's getting better. She's making new friends and she's actually getting out there. She's going out of her comfort zone to learn new things. Like, I mean, when she went out and seen the breezies and all sorts, she's like, oh, did yay, you, Flutters! Did you just watch that Silver Quill video? Yeah, I just... <laughs> yeah. There's a plug there. Like, go watch Civil Quill's video. Um, he did. He makes a point. Yeah, he he makes a good point about Fluttershy. I wouldn't say she was the only introvert in the group. I would say Twilight's got introverted, but uh, qualities as well. She changed. Like, she was introvert, but she became extrovert later on. Yeah, she did. But a lot of people can. Everyone's sort of on a scale. I think Fluttershy's more on the introverted extreme. She's like right at that. Yeah, Extreme. but she she's improving. She's improving. Like, um, yeah. after six years of pony episodes, she's beginning to become more out there. Yeah, you did tame Discord, and if you think about it, right? Like, so this shy, she can speak to animals. She can stare down a dragon, and she tame Discord. Exactly. If she puts sets her mind to it, she can rule Equestria. It's like, if she used the stare, she could rule the question. Indeedy, indeedy. <laughs> and that's why she has to be nerfed. Yeah, I suppose. They have to give her social anxiety to nerf her so that she won't completely and utterly take over all of Equestria yeah. and Jack Yakistan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And also the Christian Empire. Don't forget the Christian Empire. Oh, yeah, the product placement. Yes. Yep, yep. So, talking about the Christian Empire, favourite episode? Favourite episode? 
Uh, I would have to say it's Gauntlet of Fire because Dragonlance and a good Spike episode. Mm, I, I, I recently saw that because of the replay before the new episode and it was good. I, I like it. I like the Princess Dragon, Princess Ember. She's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Princess Fire, Lord Ember. She, yeah, I hope we get to see more. Like, her appearance is not bad. I do like her. Can't wait to talk about it on the review show. But that won't yeah. be, oh, that won't be until a while. But still, it'll be good. It'll be good. I will look forward to it and I will squee <laughs> in the comments. <laughs> Yay, awesome. So, those are your two questions. Um, Fluttershy and <laughs> Gauntlet of Fire. I would have thought it would be a Fluttershy episode. Yeah, I also like Spike though. He's like my secondary favorite character. I also like Big Mac as well. That was, what was it, Brotherhood Social? That yeah, Brotherhood was Social. That, that I like was... that one a lot as well. Yeah. You, you're you gonna like this new episode. Like, you haven't watched the new episode, right? No, I've not watched yeah, it. Yet. You're gonna enjoy this one because of that one joke they do with Big Mac. Yes. It's obvious, but still, it's, it's fun. I don't care. Obvious jokes are best jokes. <laughs> so are terrible, terrible puns. Indeed, indeed. If we can only get Rob. I mean, if we can only get Tyne Dagger <laughs> in here. I'm really sad that the Midnight Scribe and Tyne Dagger pun test did not happen. Yeah. Because I would have been all over that. <laughs> Oh, well, it takes a lot of planning to plan out a pun. I don't know how you even do that. I don't know either, but I want to see it happen. Oh, yeah, it would be fun. It will be fun. Groaningly fun. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, we have a lot of news to cover this week. And let's hop in. Uh, first news goes with Big Jim Miller dives deeper into the pony age. <laughs> Recently, Big Jim Miller was asked a question on the Twitters, and the question was, how old is Spike? Like, how old is Spike's age in comparison to a dragon and a pony kind of thing? And his answer was, Spike uh, is the same age as Twilight Sparkle in the number of years. But in a way, uh, he assumes dragon age much slower. So, technically, he's still a baby dragon. Yeah. And one thing he did, elaborate is he assumes that he's around 60 to 32 in pony years but he is maybe 10 or 12 in dragon years that's one of the things that he said and i think he did make a correction um to the folks pointing out my error yes i done goof i knew in my head that spike was younger since twilight sparkle hatched him from an egg at her magic school entrance exam, but for some reason, my fat finger wrote same age. Spike is at least 7 to 10 years younger than Twilight in pony years. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. But I always thought that the ponies were roughly aged between 19 to 22 anyway, like uh, Jim says. So, anyway, so Spike being around 11, 12, the way he acts with his uh, crush around rarity, it reminds me of a preteen anyway. So th- I was quite surprised that this was a question or even an issue. I was like, oh, I kind of assumed that they were that age anyway. The question is legit in terms of how old is Spike really? Because, okay, when we see him at the entrance exam, um, Jim said that, well, maybe 7 to 10 years difference. So let's just round it up to 10. So yeah. a 10 year difference. So probably Twilight was around that age. Let's just say uh, 8. 8 to 10. So, well, 10 years difference. Logical. And when she went to Ponyville, she probably was around the age of 18. Probably. That's a good age to travel. Uh, that's reasonable. And if we compare to the ages of the main six, uh, we do know that Fluttershy is older than Pinkie Pie. And in the Rainbow Dash episode where there was a flashback, we do see that Rainbow Dash was younger than Fluttershy. So that's one thing too. So Fluttershy is the oldest. And what else do we know? Like Fluttershy is oldest. Uh, second to her probably is Applejack. Then Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash are the same age, and then Twilight, or maybe the roundup. Yeah, that? they've not really established like when Rarity's birthday, Twilight's birthday, Rainbow Dash's. Well, they did do Rainbow Dash's birthday. They had a anniversary. Yeah, but we got uh, no idea how old. I'm just assuming. Yeah, that, not in comparison. Yeah, I'm just assuming that between AJ two Rarity, except for Fluttershy, they're about the same age, and we do know that Fluttershy is. Uh, let's just put it like she's three years ahead so assuming that she's probably 23 22 give or take 
Yeah. About that now, considering they've been in Ponyville for goodness knows how long. I don't know how much time's passed in Ponyville now. Yeah. I lost track. <laughs> yeah. No, but Pony timeline and Pony time is just so confusing because we got no idea the span of time. We know that Cadence was pregnant with um, Flurry Heart and then a few episodes away we get the baby. <laughs> yeah. How? I, I don't know. They just, well, I suppose the ponies use the control the weather themselves, so I suppose they could have winter, autumn, summer, and spring whenever they wanted. Probably, I don't know. But still, it's... Just like, I feel like winter today. I want to wear snowshoes. Oh no, they don't look so very nice. It's time for summer. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, you can do that. But still, uh, I, I do want to see, I do want to know how old is Spike really, in terms of dragon years, because when he went to the dragon den for the, what was it called? The, dra- the summon of the Dragon Lord? The Dragon Migration, yeah. yeah. No, not Dragon Migration. Yona? The Or you on about Gauntlets of yeah, Fire Gauntlet when he went Fire, to yeah. Dragons. Yeah, what was that called again? Just the Gauntlet, I think mm, they were at. Probably, I don't know, Summoning of the Dragons. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because we see that Garble is kind of a jerk and he's one of those teen dragons. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think he's just slightly older than Spike if, in terms of like maturity because Dragons like mature differently with greed and mm, all that jazz. That's that's just confusing. Yeah, so it's like, do they even properly age? I mean, could you still be a baby a hundred years old, and can you be an adult at three years old? <laughs> yeah, that, that's that, that's one of those things where we do need some canonization for dragon age. I would love to see more of the dragon culture. We got a tiny, teeny, tiny, itty bitty bit of it, but it was good. I want more of it. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. So, what what can we say? Spike right now is within his pre-teens, probably? Yeah, I'm maintaining it's pre-teens, so that's the impression he gives me. Mm. Even though he's technically a baby dragon, he's a pre-teen dragon. Yeah, like, the, in pony, pony years, he's a pre-teen, probably same, uh, around the same age as, let's just say, the CMCs. Would that be fair? Yeah, I think he is. Yeah. So, yeah, Spike's growing up, so yay, uh, more story developments. Let's hope for something awesome. Yeah, man. Look forward to it. And talking about story development, <laughs> uh, this, uh, how do you want to tackle this? Uh, I think Bonbon and Lyra cover it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's go for the summarized version here. Uh, an interesting series of tweets was released by Jeremy Whitley over the Twitter talking about a panel at BabsCon where the writers discuss random things with the audience, particularly a bit about LGBT representation in kids' programming and Rainbow Dash coupling with Fluttershy in canon? Well, I find it surprising that they want to pair Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy. I mean, I understand because then it's bringing it to the attention because you've got the main six where most of the focus is, so then you can look at it properly, but I don't see the chemistry like that between Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy, whereas if you've got Bon Bon and Lyra, they have the chemistry. They're in a stable relationship, so I think that represents it pretty well. I know they don't get as much screen time, but maybe the writers could just make it more screen time for them to. But here's the thing where I don't agree with the idea of pairing in the show because I may sound old, but the show is for kids, and I'm not saying that they shouldn't try it, I'm all for it, no. but it's a situation where the show is for kids, so we should put things lightly. And romance is one of those things where it's a difficult topic to deal with. Yeah, especially if you're dealing with younger children trying to explain what the purpose in it is without getting too technical. Yeah, I mean, like, the pairing between guy and girl is normal. The majority of the world have that pairing, but you do also have um, LGBT pairing. And that is going to be confusing to talk about it. Even the show, The Legend of Korra, they didn't say it straight out in the show, but they want Korra and Asami to be an item. And they are. It's like, well, I don't think you need to outright say so. I mean, like I said with Bon Bon and Lyra, they didn't outright say that they were together, but people that are Kids that are older and learning about that stuff will know, whereas younger kids are just like, oh, they're together, they like each other, boom, that's it. Mm-hmm. That's all you essentially need to know. They love each other, so what? Uh, true that, but one of the things that um, when you try to do a show is the right balance of things. Like, 
you want to do a love story. So how do I balance this out? Because I've seen stories that include love as one of the driving mechanics for the show. And it can get really boring and it can get really tiring. Yeah, that's true. I don't think pairing any of the main six would do well. It would just derail it, I think. Just leave them as they are. They're, they work fine when they're trying not to like go for a relationship. Like all these girl programs are like, oh, but they have to have a love interest. They don't. It works fine. I, I don't mind the, oh, we have to have a love interest, blah, blah, blah. But it depends on the show, depends on the writer, depends on the situation because love can be heavy. It's a very encompassing topic because there's so many different types of love as well. It's not just romantic love. You can have platonic love. You can have like love for your family, love for your friends, love for a thing. Just me. But then someone will ask and say, what about Spike and Rarity? <laughs> well, yeah. How did... That's not love. That's infatuation. It's different. But Spike thinks it's love and people will say that's love. So do a lot of people do. Yeah, so like people will say, what about that? That's a hard topic to explain. But here's the thing. How is that storyline going? Mm, they kind of just left it though, haven't <laughs> yeah. they? Just they don't. Abandoned yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. I, as much as I'm a fan of Rary Spike, the show's not doing anything. I'm more of the fan of the show gives us ideas and we run wild. So let's just go to filmfic or fanfiction.net and let's just... But see, that's part of the fun as well. Like, you get your own imagination can make up for parts that the writers can't. I mean, would you like it if the writers just explained every single little detail and there was no room for your own creativity? I I personally wouldn't. I like running off with ideas and nah. entertaining myself that Yeah, way. and here's the thing. I mean, as much as I like the show telling me what's what and we can have one of those concrete answer kind of deal, sometimes it gets boring. And if they say that they're going to pair up Rainbow Dash with Fluttershy... I'm not in agreement. No, I'm not. There's not enough evidence through the previous episodes that there is a chemistry like that to make sense. Even if they have, nah, I'm not in agreement. I'm more of the bandwagon of Fluttershy Discord. Oh yeah, Fluttershy Discord. Have you heard about the Celestia Discord one? I don't understand that one at all. There's a, there's a good uh, fan, fan fiction about Celestia and Discord. I, I've seen it before. It's pretty good. That's the fanfic. That's the problem. I've not read the fan fictions. <laughs> yeah. Still. Uh, almost 10 months and it's like, have you read the fan fiction? <laughs> eh, no. <laughs> well, you've been that type. Drive ponies. Well, there's people reading it to you nowadays. So, you can always try. I'll have to go and find someone with a nice soothing voice to go and listen to. Well, I can always recommend some people to you. Like, um, Chef Sandy from Bronyville. He does a fanfic reading on his YouTube channel called uh, Severin Drake. That sounds like someone likes Severus Snip and Drake. Yeah, oh, I don't know, but uh, you can look for him on YouTube. His channel is called youtube.com slash user slash Jess a Fox. Okay. Hmm. And he does a lot of Let's Plays and stuff, and he does comic dubs, but overall he does uh, fanfic readings, or he has fanfic readings there if you want to go read, so that's cool. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. Yep. But we've been harping on this topic for a while now, so what was I trying to say again? We're going on to the next topic, and I do believe that the My Little Pony movie releases come a little bit forward than what it originally was. Mm, yes, yes. Uh, we've been talking about this one a lot, and I'm not, I'm sure you remember this if you've been hearing us talking about it. It's the My Little yeah. Pony 2017 movie. It has an official date out. And, well, it's earlier, like you said, um, October 6th? Yeah, October 6th of 2017, guys. That's, that's, that's cool. I'm, I wasn't expecting that. Like, that is cool. <laughs> so, let's see. Um, the My Little Pony movie has been bumped up to its original November release to a new one, one month earlier. Date of October 6th, 2017. According to Deadline, this puts it in competition with an untitled Warner Brother film and another one of those Marvel movies. Oh yeah, the many hundreds of Marvel. Have you movies. seen Civil War? Have you seen Civil War? No, I've not seen Civil War, but uh, hashtag Iron Man. Iron Man, you? Oh, you're not interested? <laughs> nah, it's like Captain America's not been one of my favorite um, oh. Marvel movies. I know I'm gonna get so much hate, so much hate. I know, but I'm Team Stark. 
You, I'll, I'll get to it eventually, but I'm not, oh my gosh, I need to see this now, frothing at the moment. I would say go watch. It's worth it. Really? Yes, like, it's a Captain America movie, but they do talk about Tony Stark a bit more, and it'll be interesting to see. And he has this one scene in the middle of the movie where he talks to this one guy, and it's worth to watch. Like, if you like Stark and, yeah, just go, just go. I'll have to go and just gush over, like, Robert Downey Jr. But like, ah! Yeah, like, it's so cool. It's so cool. Which is the main... And then Thor's not in it, though. There's reasons. <laughs> I know there's reasons, but Thor! Where's my beautiful blonde man that I can stare at? <laughs> oh. But, but getting back on track, well, 2017. Yes, movie, ponies. 2017. Serious stuff. Uh, 2017. I, I don't know what to say. This is one of those movies where this is going to be exciting. Um, I hope I can watch it in theaters, and I hope it comes here in theaters. But talking about... Marvel movies. You again, yeah, you, Norman. You said we had to get back on track, and this is you taking it back off well, track. Well, I there's a reason for this. I have my ways. You watch Ant Man? Of course, I watched that. Oh, Man. What was your favorite part? Honestly, I like the Thomas Tank Engine bit where like they're punching and it looks like it's going to be an epic explosion, but it's just a toy <laughs> falling off the tracks. Oh, that was. I'm just like yes. <laughs> my favorite part was when. Um, and Man's friend was talking, uh, Michael Pena, and he was talking about like certain scenes, and he did the voiceover. Oh yeah, his, his way of describing things that happened, like the yeah, but no, but oh. So yeah, that, that was much fun. I highly enjoyed that scene. And talking about him, it seems that he is going to be in the My Little Pony movie. Yeah, I'm seeing that. It's like that'll be interesting, seeing what part he'll get. I want to know what the subject of the movie is actually going to be. What subject are they going to tackle that needs a movie rather than episodes? That's what I'm curious about. That is one of those things where I got no idea. But still, it's going to be interesting. And not only Michael Pena is going to be on, but uh, Uzo Abduba. I think that's how you say her name. She's also going to be in. Yeah, I thought I would let you tackle the name. I was like, yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, apparently, she played in Orange is the New Black. Yeah, she's she's the crazy lady. <laughs> yeah, and also the Wiz Live, and also in Elvin and the Chipmunks, the Road Trip. Really? She was I don't know which one. Oh, right, I've not seen that one. That must be their third one, I think. That was the one that recently came out. I never went to see that one. I was like, ugh, yeah. chipmunks and squeaky voices again. I can't handle it. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not sure. Like, um, they say that it's rumored to be, um, voiced like she and Michael Pena. So we have to wait and see. But, um, the movie's coming out soon and we may have awesome people starring in them. So I got no idea what their role's gonna be. Oh, <gasps> how awesome would it be if they got Weird Al to go back? Possible, but I don't know. I mean, in this kind of situation, probably they they just want to go for a new cast. Like they got Emily Blunt, uh, Blunt on. I would be happy if Benedict Cumberbatch was in it, but that's just me personally. But still, um, hoping this is going to be a good movie. Um, I got no idea what they're going to tackle. Like we can just speculate and speculate, but I got no idea. I think the less hype, the better, because I think the more you hype up something, you'll expect way too much of it, and then when it actually does come out, it'll fail your expectations. Mm. So it's better just to sort of go into it just Blind. open-minded. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, but sometimes you need the hype, you know, just to get some attraction to it. Like, we get a movie poster. Yeah, some hype, but not, not a lot for, like, the whole year. I remember for ages, my friends were trying to get me to watch Nightmare Before Christmas, and that got hyped to rip me to death. And then when I did eventually watch it, it was really disappointing to me, because they built it up to be this grandiose thing. Nightmare Before. But they'd seen it since childhood, and I haven't, so I was like... Nightmare Before yeah. Christmas, is that the one with Jack Skellington? Yeah, that's... Oh, the one. that one. That one was okay. Yeah, but they built it up to be this, oh my gosh, it's like the best thing ever, you will never see a movie or animation that is as good as that, oh, and it was just constant. So hype can destroy something, but that's if there's too much of it. Some hype is good to gain interest, but if you overload the hype all the time, then it is it does put a lot of pressure on the writers and the animators. And well, the mo- the everyone. movie's going to be the movie. Like the fan dictates how much hype we give a movie, and 
if it's worth it or not. Uh, a good example of hype is, well, Destiny, the video game. It had a lot of hype. Yeah. And when it came out, it was just mediocre. Mm hmm. Exactly. But still, I can't wait to see this movie. I do hope that it comes to theaters locally in my area and also yours. And yeah. people who are listening to this who have family can enjoy the movie too. Like grab some popcorn, go to the theater. Well, you go to the theater first, buy the popcorn there. You don't bring it from home. But still, you get my point. Um, Unless you're stingy like some certain cats and sneak it under your coat. Why grab popcorn? You can just grab a sandwich. Sandwich. Yes. But still, yeah. um, I, there's time to enjoy it and watch. I'm just debating on... If the movie does come out here, how am I going to watch this? With sandwiches? No, with, with friends. But most of my friends that I go watch movie with don't really... Well, let's just say that not, they're not bronies. They're just yeah. casual people who like to watch movies. And my group of friends, we just watch movies. Like we have a club, quote-unquote, where we just watch movies we we plan the time and we go watch movies. And recently, we just watched Civil War. Yay! So there's one of movie experience. Nice. The next one we're gonna tackle is um, what was the new one again? Suicide Squad, I think. Suicide Squad, Warcraft coming as mm, well. Yeah. And talking about Warcraft, <laughs> something interesting. Like we were playing games, and you were saying that you were a Warcraft fan. Oh gosh, World of Warcraft. <laughs> you, I think I escape you, but you always keep dragging me back in. <laughs> yeah. And what was the game we recently played that has a lot of nostalgia for you? Um, Heroes of the Storm. Oh, Diet Wife. Diet Wife. <laughs> I get a taste and then I can't play it. Why do you tease me, Blizzard? Why do you tease me? Oh, uh, well, I've, I've been playing that game a lot and I, I am enjoying that game. Wow. Rub it in, Norman. Rub you, it you can play it solo. I can't! It is so laggy! It gave me a taste on the tutorial, like, yeah, everything's cool, man. Everything's cool. As soon as you go into an actual game. No! Really? You can't play solo? Yeah. Re- nope. 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 Huh. Nope. Wow. It just, Blizzard likes to torture me. It's because I've been clean for four years, and then I get a taste of diet wow, and I start getting the withdrawal symptoms, and then it takes it away again. Oh, yeah, I mean, um, I do notice that um, Hero of the Storm does eat a lot of RAM. Like, on my rig with 8 gigs of RAM is eating up almost all of it. I just need a new computer. I need an Autobot of a computer to run games that I want to play. Yeah, I do recommend you having that too. And if you're interested in playing Heroes, I would suggest a 16 gig RAM. I would just need to find someone to build it for me and help me rule the world. But anyway, uh, that was the news. So, yay. Yay. News is done. Yep, indeed. And we're under... 36, probably 34, give or take. So yeah, this yeah. this is a short episode. Not much news, not, no guests. I have to look for a guest next week. Ay, ay, ay. I think you should like layer a, a bear trap and then someone will fall into it and be like, boom, you are now the guest of the MBS show. Yeah, I should do that. Yeah. Or like, you know, leave snares. Yeah. It happens. Well, we could just send an invitation and ask. That might work a lot better, but I like the bear trap one. Yeah. That seems more fun. <laughs> Interview a traumatized person going, Why am I in this pit? Because you're on the MBS show. How do you feel? Ah! Uh, that, that's not, that's not sane. But anyway, uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. So what we'll tweet about this show, retweet it, and well, interact with you if you talk to her. You can also reach me on the Twitters at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and wherever tickles my fancy. Currently tickling my fancy is... Hmm. Nothing really. Uh, except for movies. But other than that, there's nothing really. What about you, Lurk? I'm on the computer every day. It's mostly just games at the moment. I'm just playing on Steam with a bunch of you guys. Although I've not played Left 4 Dead 2 with you yet, Norman. I don't even know if you have I do, I do. You should see my derp, it's hilarious. Oh, this is going to be one of those experiences, isn't it? Where I just get a chainsaw and run into death, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of them experiences. Yep. And then everyone comes and helps me, even though they should just leave me for dead, because that's where I deserve to be, on the ground, dead. Uh, well, we could always play Cards Against Humanity. 
<laughs> You've not played Cards Against Humanity with me. I'm a surf that like a fire, Norman. Oh, well. But it's still, it's still, it's still a fun game, it's still a fun game. But anyway, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on TonyVLife.com. Links are in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Lurker Cat. And we'll catch you guys next week with another amazing episode of the NBS Show. We'll catch you guys later. See ya! Bye! Let's move on to the next news. And this is going to be interesting because you guys remember... That's not a word! What did it hear now? What was that? That was a John Tron <laughs> um, alert on my phone. <laughs> I have a text. <laughs> it says I ain't having that. That's not a word! <laughs> oh, wow, that's not a word.